chemical formulas. So a chemical formula is a shorthand that tells us what elements are present in the compound and the relative numbers of each of them. So we put the element symbols in here. This is the chemical formula for water. So we've got H for hydrogen and O for oxygen. And we have a subscript here. The subscript 2 tells me that there are two atoms of hydrogen for every one oxygen atom. There should be, we would think, a subscript of 1 there. But chemists don't like to write the number 1. How do we know that there's any oxygen in there? Well, because we wrote the symbol. And if there was two oxygens, we'd put a number two. If there was five, we'd put a five. So if we write the symbol, that means there's one. If we put a subscript, then that tells us how many there are. It's like the old guy, the old couple, they've been married for like a gazillion years. And she's like, you never tell me you love me anymore. Well, I told you once. <coughs> It hasn't changed. I'll let you know if it changes. I'm not exactly sure how that pertains to this. <laughs> seemed, seemed good at the time. We'll skip over that now. Um, common chemical formulas. So we talked about sodium chloride, table salt, NaCl. So when we look at this formula, Na, there's no subscript, so we understand that that's a 1. And Cl is also a 1. So for every one sodium atom, there's one chlorine atom. That is the ratio of the atoms. It's not the same as the mass ratio. We were just talking about mass ratio. We looked at the mass ratio of carbon and oxygen in, in a compound. This is numbers of atoms. These are always going to be whole numbers, because just like with people, you can't have part of an atom. You know, the average family is like 2.2 people. or two, No, the average family is 2.2 children, something like that. How can you have two-tenths of a child? You can't, right? You can't. You can have two or you can have three, but you can't have part of a child. Um, so in the same way, in chemical formulas, because they are discrete atoms, building blocks of matter, you have to have exact numbers of them. It's always going to be whole numbers. CO2 is the formula for carbon dioxide. One carbon atom to two oxygen atoms. This is the formula for sucrose. C12, H22O11. So 12 carbon atoms, 22 hydrogen atoms, 11 oxygen atoms. So we could say the ratio is 12 to 22 to 11. Those subscripts are part of the compound's identity. If you change the subscript, you are now describing some other compound that may or may not exist. So we have to be really careful when we write these. And I know some of you don't like details, but unfortunately life is full of details. So CO or CO2, that 2 makes a big difference. CO is carbon monoxide. It's an air pollutant, and it can kill you. CO2, carbon dioxide, relatively harmless pr product from combustion and human respiration. We're sitting in here, breathing in oxygen, exhaling CO2. Anybody dying? Not from breathing CO2. And the plants like it, and they take it, and they use it for things. Carbon monoxide is bad news. What's the difference? A little too. And then... What if we have C with a small o? That's the element cobalt. We're not trying to be mean, being picky about how we write these formulas. We're, we're trying to have a shorthand that everybody can use and understand without confusion. So if I am sloppy and write my O small, instead of large, I've indicated a completely different substance. So we have to be really careful with the size of our letters and with these numbers. Um, you may wonder, well, why, why is it NaCl? Why not call it CLNA? Why not? 
Well, they decided on a particular order. Um, in general, the most metallic element goes first. Um, there are a few that don't do that, um, but most of them do that. So in sodium and chlorine, sodium is a metal. From, we know that from its position on the periodic table. Chlorine is not. So the metal goes first. I think of metals as being masculine and nonmetals as being feminine. When you address a formal invitation to a party or to a wedding, you always write Mr. and Mrs. You don't write Mrs. and Mr. Why? It's convention, right? It's what everybody does. The man goes first and then the woman. The masculine, the metal goes first and then the non-metal. Just because we decided to do it that way, it's no reflection on who's more important or anything like that. It's just convention, okay? Just get over it. What if you have two non-metals? Which one do you list first? You list the one that's closest to the metals on the periodic table. So if we look at nitrogen and oxygen, they're both non-metals, but one of them is to the left. Nitrogen is to the left of oxygen. So let me draw a little picture here. So on the periodic table, there's nitrogen, here's oxygen. These are the metals over here. Nitrogen is closer to the metals. It's not a metal, but it's more metal-like. So we're going to list nitrogen first. So we're going to list N2O, not ON2. Okay? Not a big deal. You, you won't get tested on this, but you may wonder, why, why did she correct me when I did this? And, and why is it this way and not this other way? It's a convention. There is a specific order. Here's the specific list. Um, if you're interested in that, there are a couple of exceptions. Um, so one of them is hydroxide ion. So oxygen is listed before hydrogen. Um, that's going against this list, um, but we just have to deal with that. Okay, so let's write a chemical formula for each of these compounds. The compound that contains two silver atoms to every sulfur atom. Now, do we need to think about which goes first? Usually in the question, they list them in the correct order. So if you're not sure, you can just do that. So silver, what's the symbol for silver? AG. AG, that's silver. Argentum. And two silver atoms, how do I indicate that? A subscript of two after. Sulfur is a capital S. And to every sulfur atom, so this is a ratio of two to one, um, I'm not going to put a one here because we understand that by writing the symbol, we mean there's one. So that's the formula. How about two nitrogen atoms to every oxygen atom? And two O. N2 means two nitrogens. O means one oxygen. How about two irons to three oxygens? Iron is Fe, and two of those, Fe, and oxygen is a capital O, three. Okay. Um, some of you like to write in all caps, and so you might want to write iron like this. You can't do that. That's not okay. You can do it in all your other words, but not in the element symbols. A lowercase e looks like that, and you've got to use a lowercase e. Sorry. Yeah, question? Will you ever have two elements in the same group that are either both not metals or both metals? Will you have to know the side of one right Well, that's a good question. Um, that stair step line is at an angle. So, you know, what if you have two nonmetals in the same group, like sulfur and oxygen? They're in the same group, but which one is closer to the metals? It's the sulfur because it is, I mean, you can, you can do it by counting squares or you could get a ruler and measure who is closer in distance and it'll be sulfur and sulfur goes first. Um, not by atomic number, no. That's not going to help. I 
have two minutes, people. I want to finish this section. Okay, what about polyatomic ions? So polyatomic ions um, are groups of atoms that act as a unit. And so when we have multiples of these, we need to be careful. So this formula, Mg, and then in parentheses, we've got the NO3. That's a special group, um, NO3 minus, called nitrate. We'll learn more about that later. And then on the outside, we have a subscript 2. So the subscript 2 on the outside of the parentheses says we have two of everything that's inside the parentheses. Why do we need the, subs uh, the parentheses? Well, if we wrote Mg NO3 2, that looks like 32 oxygens, right? And one nitrogen. That's not what we meant. It's a little bit like shopping at Costco. You can't just buy a single bottle of ketchup, can you? You can only buy two. How do they keep you from buying just one? They bundle them. They shrink wrap them, right? So the parentheses are like the shrink wrap. This NO3 is a bundle pack. You can't just get nitrogens and oxygen separately from that. It's got shrink wrap around it. So the number on the outside says, I'm buying two of those Costco packages. So I'm getting a nitrogen and three oxygens as a unit, and I'm getting two of them. So this, this subscript on the outside applies to everything inside the parentheses. No, you can't write N206 because, just because for now. You don't want to separate them. Because nope. they won't let you open the packages and stick them together at Costco either. You can put them next to each other, but you can't mix them up. I just made that up right now. Um, how many atoms of each type are in the following formulas? Uh, let's do this last one first. So there's, what elements are there? Yeah, they're all cooperating. Let's get this over with. How many <laughs> aluminum atoms? Two. Thank you. How many sulfur atoms? Three. How many oxygen atoms? Twelve. Twelve. Awesome. K2SO4. So how many potassiums? Two. How many sulfurs? One. How many oxygens? Four. Perfect. Oh, that's enough.